today I'm joined by Miriam Nadeau, City Councilor for Point Gatineau and President of the Société de Transport de l'Outaouais. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Gatineau has been working for a couple years now, and especially in the past couple months, on building up and uh, determining how best to serve the western half of the city, specifically the Plateau and Elmer. A decision has been made to build a tram or an LRT through these regions. Can you tell us a little bit about what informed this decision? What were the, the factors that came into play to make this decision? Yes, so at this point in time, we're conducting an opportunity study about this project for what we need is to put forward a structuring public transit system for the west end of our city, as you've mentioned it, for our ridership, but also because we are facing a lot of growth, uh, population growth in that portion of the city. Um, and so we need to make sure that these people have a uh, viable option to uh, get to their destination points are you know going to work and coming from work and also to you know for recreation purposes and so on so this project is really based on a need assessment for our west end users and the growth we're facing there um, the opportunity study we're conducting right now it's a four-step study to determine the route the technology and the cost of the project and so far, the study, it has determined that two axes coming from Elmer are necessary to get our people in both downtowns, that is in Getno and in the Ottawa downtown, and that at least on one of those two axes, a tram is needed to cross the bridge to get into Ottawa. What are the advantages that the tram and the LRT would bring to commuters and citizens of Gatineau, and in particular those residing in the plateau in Elmer? Yes, well, considering the fact that there are like more than 200,000 interprovincial crossings daily and 25% of those are in public transit, considering also that our road system is at capacity in the Elmer se se sector since 2014, um, and knowing that right now we have uh, 305, we have 3,500 passengers an hour that cross the Potash Bridge in the morning peaks, and that number is expected to grow uh, to more than double by 2031 to bring it to 7,000 to 7,500 uh, passengers an hour at peak hours in the morning to get to uh, Ottawa. Um, that means that these people need to be able to rely on a system that works for them so that they're not caught in traffic. Um, so that is the biggest advantage of this project going forward to reduce traffic. Um, and also to reduce bus traffic that we had started to see, uh, you know, pre-COVID or on buses were creating their own traffic on the Portage Bridge getting to the Ottawa downtown. Um, it will bring more frequency and reliability to our riders because our tram will not be kept in traffic. It will also bring economic benefit to our population, meaning it's more affordable to take public transit than to, you know, uh, maintain a car, maybe reduce the need for a second car in a home. Um, the benefits to environment as well, you know, because the system will be electric and bringing less traffic also brings less GHG emissions. We also see it as a tool for economic development and prosperity. Um, as it's, you know, these big scales project improve, um, you know, bring people in, in our cities and also improves the fluidity between our two cities for the exchanges that we can conduct um, economically speaking and socially speaking as well. Um, and it will also bring more people at a walking distance to uh, reliable, uh, frequent, comfortable public transit. Um, and depending on the final routes, you know, the uh, amount of people at a walking distance will, you know, somewhat vary, but we're expecting more, uh, an increase of more than 40% of people uh, in the West End that will be at a walking distance from this uh, new uh, structuring uh, public transit uh, system. Now, we're talking about the west end of Gatineau. The east end has, for ever since 2012, 
had the Repibus bus rapid transit system. Is there ever a possibility that you see in the future of that being converted into rail to sort of have rail crossing from both ends of the city? Absolutely. And the Repibus was built following the old train tracks that we have uh, in that section of the city. So it's been designed to eventually be able to um, make the uh, transfer from you know, um, asphalt to a, a rail system. Uh, the reason it wasn't done uh, at the forefront was the reason of uh, density and also a, a need assessment. Um, but definitely, we see the, the Rapibus as a transition technology towards uh, eventually being on rail. You touched a while ago on the crossings over the Portage Bridge. It was announced recently that STO's preferred choice would be to cross by the Portage Bridge over one of the nearby adjacent bridges. What decision informed that and why is the Portage Bridge the, the preferred choice? Yeah, so on this uh, opportunity study that's being conducted right now, um, all partners are around the table. That means the STO is uh, conducting the study with the input and collaboration of people from the city of Ottawa, the city of Gatineau, from OC Transpo, from the NCC. So it's, it's really our hands-on to make sure that this metropolitan project really takes into account uh, the realities and complexities of, you know, where it's being, where it will be built. Um, and the assessment of the bridge was, you know, was made with everybody around the table. And what came across is that you know, people are moving from the west end of the city coming into the downtowns. So in public transit being what it is, people want to have the quickest road there, right? So um, the bridge, the decision to go with the, or the recommendation to prioritize the Portage Bridge is made on the fact that it is the bridge that brings people the closest to both their destination points, whether it's in downtown Gatineau or in downtown Ottawa, uh, with the less detours. Um, for example, if we, when we were looking at the Prince of Wales Bridge, it's an advantage to people who you know want to get maybe to the Ottawa downtown, but for those riders that want to get to the get no downtown, then they would have to make a detour and transit again, you know, cross over to Ottawa and then cross back again from Ottawa to get to their destination point. And the same was true also of the Alexandria Bridge because people coming from the West End were des des uh, with their destination point being the Ottawa downtown would have to make the detour um, on the Ottawa side to get to their destination point in front of Parliament, for example. Looking at the numbers with Ottawa as well, and that was information coming from OC Transpo that the Bayview station that was built um, across the uh, Prince of Wales Bridge over time would not have the capacity to accommodate all of our riders crossing over. And having in mind that we're building this project for the next 50 years, it's not something that we envisioned in the interest of everybody to get our riders over there and then in a number of a couple of years, um, not having the residual capacity on the trains to take them on. So that was another uh, factor in the, in the assessment of which uh, crossing was the best one for this project. There's three routings that have been proposed two hybrid and one all tram routing. Can you explain briefly a little bit about each of these choices and what advantage each would bring? Yes, so we started out with five scenarios for this opportunity study and now we're down at three. And two of those scenarios include an option where on one of the two axes, we, on the get to know side, on one of the two axes, we have uh, buses instead of tram. So as uh, mentioned previously, the study um, assessed that to answer the demand, the need for our riders in the West End, we need to have a route that's on the north and one on the south. So basically the two hybrid options, it's one where the tram is on the south uh, axe and the buses are on the north axe. And then the other hybrid is the opposite, is having the tram on the north axe and the uh, buses on the south one. 
Um, but then coming on the bridge, it's been assessed that we need a tram to cross over to Ottawa. So, and then the third option is the all tram option where it's a tram on both axes coming into Ottawa. So we envision once such a system is built, regardless of which option, there will still be buses coming from the east end of, of Gatineau. Yes, because we have all of our Rapibus uh, transit system that relies on buses. Um, but definitely having a tram or even a hybrid would reduce uh, the amount of buses. However, it's been um, assessed by our experts uh, doing the study that only an all tram option would really meet um, the targets that we have concluded or, and engaged to with the city of Ottawa and the agreement that we signed in 2017 to reduce the amount of buses in their downtown. So, you know, that is one reason why Ottawa prefers the all tram option. But at this point in time, we're still assessing the, the three of them. Crossing into Ottawa, we've talked about the Portage Bridge. Again, two options that have been proposed, a surface option on Wellington Street and in an underground tunnel going underneath Sparks. Now, of the two choices, can you explain what the position is of, of um, Gatineau and then what you have heard from your counterparts in the NCC and in the city of Ottawa? Yes, well, Gatineau is really, um, you know, we really see this as a collaborative work. Like the status quo is not acceptable for both cities. We know that if we don't do anything, we'll just suffer more traffic, both of us in both our downtowns. So we know that something must be done. And the get to know and the STO's view is that for this project to work, we need to be um, listening to everybody around the table. We need to be um, cognizant of their issues, of their realities and also to bring everybody to make the compromises that need to be made for a project to go forward. Because as I said, the status quo is, is non-viable. Um, so in terms of how this tram would integrate in the Ottawa downtown, the reason that the idea of a tunnel is on the table is because it responds to um, some preoccupations from Ottawa. It's, it's to the request that we include that in the study. And get to know our point of view is that, you know, it's Ottawa's downtown. So obviously they need to be um, enthusiastic about the solution that we put forward um, being an option that can actually be realized. Um, so our point of view is that, you know, we're looking at, at the at the tunnel because we understand that it's important for the city of Ottawa that we look into that option. But we've also put forward the Wellington ad grade option because, you know, giving that funding is in there for a tunnel, we still need a project to go forward. Um, and that's where the city of Ottawa said that it is open for a Wellington ad grade, even though it prefers the tunnel option. So that's what we're working with. Um, with our counterparts from Ottawa and also the NCC has also expressed um, that it is open for the Wellington option, at grade op uh, option as well. So right now, that's how we're, we're uh, working towards the end of this study, looking into the, the final step of this study, which is... Um, sorry, let's just mean the, the ref refinement of solution step, uh, where we will do a multi-criteria and cost-benefit analysis of all options, which will include uh, the two uh, insertion scenarios uh, in Ottawa. Well, the three, the Wellington ad grade with and without traffic. Now, let's talk a bit about the timeline. So what work has already been completed as far as studies, consultation, uh, presentations? Where do we stand at this point? Well, right now we're finalizing the opportunity study. It's, an, it's a study that started back in 2011, if my, my, my memory is good. Um, so before I was even a city councillor, when I was uh, put at the STO uh, board as the chair of the board, 
um, we were just finishing that first opportunity study. And that first opportunity study is the one that, that concluded that we needed two axes, one north and one south, to um, answer the need uh, for growth in the West End. And that first study also concluded that we needed to dig further into the option of an all-rail technology because of the vision that we share for a metropolitan area and also the risks of, uh, of uh, traffic by bus if we were to go forward with an all-bus solution only. So that's how this study that's undergoing right now came to life. Um, to dig into those uh, first uh, outcomes of that first study. Um, and right now we're in the midst of, like, we're in the final miles of this, uh, uh, I would say, complementary opportunity study, um, which is to resume by uh, in the course of the summer, summer 2021. And with that study, what we are looking to have is a uh, final recommendation on the route, the technology, either hybrid or all, tra all, all tram, and also a budget assessment for the project. And then once that is done, then we would move into the pre-project phase of planning. Once everything is, is completed, all the studies, all the consultations, there's funding and all that, what would you see or, and what is being discussed as a possible start for construction in an ideal scenario? Are we looking in the next couple of years? What kind of timeline? And when do you see it opening? Projects of this scale are on the eight to ten year horizon for their operation to like to be put in operation. So at this point of time, we're looking at a you know around twenty thirty um, year of like welcoming our first riders um, at this point if, in time. It's, it's too early to go in much more details in terms of, um, you know, critical steps or, you know, uh, other, you know, mark dates for this project. So right now we, it's really an eight to 10 year horizon for the project to be, for a project of this scale to be done and uh, in operation. Um, and I also want to point out to the fact that Throughout the opportunity study, there has been a no number of occasions where we have consulted with our population um, and we, the STO is also engaged with the community in a number of committees where we engage directly with the communities that are more um, to be impacted by this project. So that work is already ongoing and it's been undergoing throughout the whole process and it will continue to be ongoing uh, moving forward. And there were also uh, like um, all public consultations conducted in Getsno, but also in Ottawa when the uh, uh, scenario uh, options were, were put out publicly for the integration in Ottawa. You know, we were looking for citizen input on the uh, ad grade and the underground options. Um, so I, I just wanted to assert that we're, we're, really, um, we're really keen to have the population's um, point of view on this project because at the end of the day, we're doing this for a population, for its health, for its uh, you know, quality time in family instead of in traffic. So it's really important for us to make sure that we have their input throughout the whole process. I also want to touch a little bit on the Ottawa Gatineau Loop. There's been a lot of uh, interest because we're, we're talking now about seeing the Alexandra Bridge get replaced in the, the somewhat near future. There's going to be the STO tram that will likely come in the next 10 years. And there's a lot of push for the loop to facilitate people going back and forth to downtown cores. Now, where do you see that project? How do you see that potentially um, advancing or integrating with what you're offering? Yes, well, we would see it more integrating as something complementary, somewhat of a phase two of this project, because, um, well, first of all, it's really important for the STO and the City of Ottawa, I would say, for the current project that is already being under study, that is, you know, already engaged within the community to go forward, to not have it be installed by the idea of integrating a loop to it, like... 
And for this project of a loop, um, the way that it's been presented so far to go forward, um, it would need for the STO project to be an at-grade integration on Wellington for, for it to be you know, linked to the STO project. So the way we see it is that the STO project is the one that is really enshrined in a need for our communities, for both our cities to go forward. And given the level of engagement already underway and the studies already being conducted, that needs to still move along. You know, we cannot stall this important project for a region at this point in time. It needs to move forward. That being said, if the federal government or the NCC wants to pursue the idea of a loop, obviously the STO will be open to talk about it and see how that can be linked to the project that we have underway and how we can answer to other needs that we may have, uh, aside from those that we need to answer to for our West End population growth going to the both downtowns. Um, and, and so we see this as something interesting, um, but we're also sensitive to the fact that at the end of the day, you know, th the major part of this loop um, will be in the city of Ottawa. So, you know, we're also sensitive to the fact that they, you know, both cities have to, to be on board with how it would uh, unravel in their downtowns. Uh, but we're definitely open to, uh, to welcome uh, a project of, that, that would uh, be complementary to the one that we're working on right now. Now, one of the most important things about any project of, of a scale such as this is consultation and public input. Moving forward, and what has already been done in the past, how can residents on both sides of the river um, contribute their thoughts to, these, to this important project? Well, I invite the population to... Um, subscribe to the STO's uh, social media to make sure that they're always, you know, first and informed of uh, opportunities for consultation coming up. Um, we've also seen in the get no side a coalition being put forward by civil society called Salier pour le Tramway, which is basically, um, you know, people from diverse horizons that are coming together and saying how important this project is for our collective good. Um, so that is also another way where they can contribute. They have a website and they're also and they're looking for signature for a petition. And at this point in time, the, the claim for this group is to, you know, have the federal government commit to fund this project uh, in, ex in concrete terms. Um, so at, at the short on the short term, I would say that that's the biggest contribution we could have from from the society right now is to, you know, join their voice to ours uh, to make sure that our governments um, invest money in these important green infrastructure projects and, you know, which is important more than ever coming out of, uh, you know, the COVID crisis. And if we really want this um you know, post-crisis to be green and to seize the opportunity while projects such as this are, you know, what we're looking for. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight and, and discussing the future of transit in, in Gatineau, especially the West End. Thank you very much and best of luck on this project. Thank you so much.